Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, January 20th. Our special guests today are Jesse McKinley and Stacey Aguilar. The topic is Gamify It, PD and Classroom Challenge Activities. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. I will now turn over the mic to Peggy, who will introduce our guests and ask them the newbie question. Well, hello, and welcome to all of you. I'm Peggy George, and I, I'm joining you from Phoenix, Arizona, and I am thrilled to welcome and introduce our two special guest presenters today who are also from Phoenix, Arizona. Jesse McKinley and Stacy Aguilar are two exemplary teachers in Kimmel View School, Madison School District. I am always so inspired by their energy and passion and the great creativity and fun they bring to their very lucky students. They'll be sharing some innovative ways they're gamifying some challenge activities, both for professional development with other teachers and in the classroom that I know you're going to love. These activities not only build skills, but they're also great for building community in a really fun way. I hope you'll all be able to take some time to explore our great live binder for today because it is loaded with tons of resources for gamification. Jessie's a kindergarten through grade four general music teacher at Madison Camelview. He's been teaching for over 17 years, and 13 of those years have been at Madison. He earned his bachelor's degree from St. Cloud State University and has two master's degrees, one from Arizona State University in elementary education and one from Grand Canyon University in curriculum and instruction, specializing in technology. Jesse grew up in the Midwest, Illinois and Wisconsin, and he loves lots of things, but especially the arts, cooking, watching football, playing volleyball, and, of course, technology. Stacy is a fourth grade gifted educator at Madison Camel View with over 16 years of teaching, all of them at Madison. She earned her bachelor's degree in elementary education at the University of Arizona and her master's in instruction and curriculum from Arizona State University. Stacy is an Arizona native and her favorite things to do are game nights with friends, going to movies, reading, traveling, and her dog, Toby. So welcome, Jesse and Stacy. We're so happy to have you with us today. And we'd like you to answer our newbie question and then just move right into your presentation. And our question is, when you think about gamification, what exactly does it mean to you to gamify either your classroom curriculum or professional development? Thank you, Peggy, for that wonderful introduction. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was a nice trip down memory lane to all the, of how I started and where I've gotten, of uh, where I've come, uh, came to. And, um, the question, uh, what does it mean to gamify uh, our uh, classroom curriculum, I, I like to think of it as taking those um, really cool elements of games um, and interweaving it into, into my activities with the students. Um, so it's the being able to earn points, being able to work with the others, uh, work uh, work by yourself if necessary, um, but um, having a goal and trying to accomplish it with uh, with uh, whatever obstacles are, that are in your way. Hi, good morning. Thank you again for that introduction. Um, within the classroom, um, the gamification is really just getting the kids actively engaged and excited about their learning. Um, just taking it to a level where they work as a team and they have a common goal 
and can um, work together to solve through problems and earn points and have goals for themselves. And uh, that brings us to our 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 topic, our our topic of discussion discussion for today, um, gamifying it. Um, our our PD and classroom challenges activities. Um, it's a new idea in progress. I like to take that from the uh, game in progress. Um, we have a um, a, a really unique. Uh, uh, program at our school that we've, we're just starting with um, our adults or with our teachers, and um, the byproduct of that in in um, in Stacy's class um, was that um, that uh, it kind of morphed into something really really unique. And I'm going to talk personally about the um, professional development uh, model that we're using with, uh, that that's including game uh, gamification. And uh, Stacy will take the uh, how it metamorph metamorphosized into her classroom. And again, there's Stacy. Um, she's here because um, she loves to share ideas. And uh, if you want to follow her on Twitter, her Twitter, ha Twitter handle is uh, on the bottom: s Aguilar four 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 four. And that's me. Hi, I'm Jesse McKinley, and my Twitter handle is McKin, uh, mckinj01 um, on Twitter. Um, and I, I'm here because I love to share great ideas. So I'm not going to um, give you the, the academic terms of, of gamification, um, but I will share with you some things that I've, I've noticed in, in my research in, in gamification. And I will present information how our district uh, took the idea of gamification and medicinized it to, um, to be kind of an innovative uh, way for teachers to gain new skills and to use tools that we've um, already been um, already have acquired. So, but just to give everybody a kind of a high level or low level um, uh, baseline of what, what, what it is, gamification is game mechanics, the aesthetics of games, and thinking, um, a game thinking. Uh, there are a lot of tools that, um, or it's a tool that can be used to improve um, focus, um, intention, uh, and investment, uh, uh, have more investment in um, the products that, um, that, that we're using. Um, my first uh, talk about it, or my first um, um, uh, discussion of it, or uh, mention of it, was in the, uh, the New Horizon report um, in 2013. And it's... Uh, it's actually been used more in, in the business world um, with, with, um, with apps that uh, uh, allow uh, the users to gain points if they go visit places or earn badges if they visit a, a place so many times or use their products so many times. Um, and the idea of that kind of moved into education as a way for, um, for teachers and for schools or districts to um, it improve students' engagement and improve um, and, and, and get them motivated to learn. And that's pretty much what I've, I've taken out from the research that I found and the, the, the scholarly articles that I've um, scoured through, that um, it's basically achieving goals with obstacles in pre uh, present. And it's definitely um, a, a very collaborative um, kind of mindset. And that worked very, very well um, with, um, with us at our, at our school. There are some key terms that gamification um, share amongst the different different types of models. When you talk about gamification, you talk about you can go as simple as the games for for just simple enjoyment, for just for entertainment, to all the way to earning um, a badge or earning a, a certain level to simulations um, up to serious games. Um, but the terms pretty much stay the same. So you have users, you have challenges and tasks. There's points that the users are attempting and earning. There are different levels that you can achieve if you get to level t um, 
if you get, achieve 10 points, you get to level 1, 20 points, level 2, 30 points, level 3, and so on. Badges can be acquired for each, uh, for each accomplishment. And then also ranking of users, uh, ranking them, um, they got first place in this or they're in third place with that. Um, so these are the terms that are, are um, pretty much shared throughout um, the different types of models in gaming, gamification. And in one of the articles that I uh, was doing some research, uh, I came across um, an article that was that uh, was discussing the um, scavenger hunt, all night scavenger hunt at the New York uh, Public Library. And one of the quotes that really grabbed me was this quote right here. We like people better if we played a game with them. We bond and we build trust. And that really hit home with me because that is pretty much a, 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 a thought that we definitely share with our students and with our community. We are here to bond, we're here to build trust, and when we have that bond and trust, our, the learning and just the, our, our whole kind of mindset is definitely changed and transformed. Some examples of some uh, of, of gamification, um, like uh, we mentioned in the in the, in the pre-show, um, cahoots is definitely mentioned. Quizzes is um, there um, online games that take the content that you you're teaching and, and turn it into a, a game where students have uh, to answer questions in a time limit, or they have to answer questions to earn points, and then they get ranked um, or leveled or ranked. In um, uh, towards the end, class dojo and class craft um, are tools used for classroom management, and um, for um, not only for classroom management but also for other um, um, things that you're doing in your classroom, such as um, whether the students are turning in homework or they're um, being um, they're being a good citizen um, in the classroom or in, in the school district or in the school building. Um, they can earn points. Um, sometimes they can get the points taken away, which is also part of gaming um, uh, that, that is used, uh, where they get uh, a negative point. Pokemon Go is using virtual um, uh, augmented reality uh, into um, uh, students finding um, you know, Pokemon. Uh, uh, characters. But the idea of students with a device walking around um, and finding certain things or, or traveling to certain places to learn about their their character, that's that's part of that uh, that idea of uh, gamification. Dual uh, lingo is la uh, gamification of language acquisition. So there uh, there's levels in uh, if you want to learn how to learn how to speak Spanish or uh, French. You start at level one, learn basic words, you progress through the levels, and then at the end you get a kind of a quiz through the, the program to advance you to the level to, ne to the next level. And you earn points, you earn um, badges. Um, it's really kind of a, 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 a neat addition to learning a new, a new language. SimCity and Minecraft. That's the um, Simulation. So, as you build a city, you have uh, challenges and obstacles. Uh, it's, uh, there, there are examples of these uh, uh, used in education, where the you have a task. You are working with a group of students. You have a task to accomplish, and there, there's a problem that you have to solve together as a group. And the Badge uh, SOS and Badge Stack, those, those are um, add-ons to programs that you can use for uh, creating badges and, and um, rewarding uh, participants for whatever um, tasks that they're they're at hand uh, that they're, they're 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 going they're doing. So if you have uh, one of the examples that I saw was uh, if you're work, uh, work learning or working on baseball, you have a level for uh, attending a game, or you have a level for um, uh, practic uh, participating in a the, in the game, and you get a badge for that. And uh, these programs here, they're add-on programs to help track your users um, with, a, with, a, with, other, with, other, with other tasks that they're doing and, um, and, and reward them um, badges so that they can put on um, 
uh, in, in, a, in a digital format. And Google Classroom and Blackboard, I put there on, on there. Um, there's, uh, um, there are spots where you can gamify, uh, use gamification in, in Google Classroom and Blackboard to uh, keep track of, of, uh, of uh, progress, to uh, reward uh, students with points and, um, and, and um, have students work together on, on certain tasks and goals. And other resources that uh, I've found in gamification, these are some that I've actually, uh, I'm part of members of, or uh, I've joined memberships with and, and joined their communities. ISTE.org has this wonderful um, community um, for gamification. And uh, there are tons and tons of uh, resources and, and people that are um, asking questions about how to gamify their, their lesson or gamify their um, classroom or their school or school district. Um, webnet WebEd.net is another community that I've joined, um, which has another uh, resources for, for gamification, for, uh, for how to do it, the, um, the tools that, that are used. Um, and also um, skipping down to, the, um, to Google Plus and um, Twitter uh, communities, those are, you know, uh, the, the, the ones up above, they do require some membership. Um, uh, Google Plus and Twitter um, are readily available um, without necessarily joining a community or, or a group. If you type in gamification in the search engines, you'll you'll put up or uh, gamification and education in these um, in these two um, uh, tools or resources, you'll get a, a, a plethora of stuff from others. Um, I know that um, Vicki Davis is uh, also mentioned in uh, a lot of uh, resource, resources that I've, I've seen, especially in um, edtopia.org. Uh, uh, of course, she's one of the well-known names in, in, in education. So professional development at Madison uh, in my school district, uh, which is Madison um, Elementary School District number 38 in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, there's many different models that we've uh, used or we've used and we've implemented face-to-face, um, -face, online, um, a hybrid of the both of the two. Um, and our curriculum director was finding it um, um, very difficult to get uh, teachers um, to join to be motivated to, to, to get um, to use those resources to use those um, those um, those different models that, that we we have, um, the teachers can sign up. They can attend. Um, they can attend um, almost at almost any time uh, or within you know, time constraints um, of their schedule. Uh, sometimes the, the trainers will even come to them to work um, to to provide training, but. Um, it, 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 in the in the overall scheme of things, it was just getting really harder and harder to get uh, teachers to attend and to to use the tools that they've uh, they were um, they were learning uh, in their classrooms. So the our our director, um, um, Dr. Winters, he attended a conference in 2016 um, regarding uh, I'm not quite sure what what um, the, the, the conference was. But at this conference, um, he mentioned that he learned about um, a school district in South Carolina that was, um, that was presenting information on a professional development model that they were using called Level Up. Um, and it really struck him uh, as a really innovative and um, uh, a new idea to kind of push uh, or bring teachers to the trainings, have them utilize it, and also um, work collaboratively with 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 each other, with the resources that we have at the district um, level, um, to implement uh, those ideas into the classrooms uh, a little bit more. So he took their program, uh, the the idea of their program, and Madisonized it. So in our professional development um, here at Madison, one of the models, or this new model, um, it's called Level Up. 
Um, we have 16 challenges for certified teachers. Um, there is a there's a level up for classified uh, staff, which are 12 challenges. And there are many opportunities in the model here for teachers and staff to lead. Um, and also, it uses the challenges, used resources that we've, um, the school district invested in. Um, so there's, there's already materials that we've, we have. Uh, um, we just, uh, the, 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 the challenges is to get them more implemented uh, and uh, get them more um, put into the classrooms for, for our, our teachers and our, our students to use. Um, and another thing uh, that uh, the, the professional development did, or this uh, model is, it's to honor the accomplishments of our, our, our trailblazers here that are, are blazing through the trails um, uh, through the, prof pr through the uh, professional development. And it also works, um, it, it works not only in our, in our mission statement at our school, but it's also one of our, um, our stakeholder um, uh, goals or our strategic goals in our, at our district to involve um, our teachers, to honor, um, to recognize their accomplishments. Um, and you're going to see uh, some, some examples of that a little bit later on. So our level up, uh, our level up tracking posters, um, there, we created um, there, uh, uh, these posters to um, be posted uh, outside the, wall, uh, the doors of our teachers um, to show what they've accomplished to celebrate the, the, the many different accomplishments that they've done. Uh, it's a point of pride at our school and uh, in our district. And um, every, um, at the end of the month, the, the posters are updated and teachers are informed of, of, uh, of, of where, um, or where, where teachers' levels are. Um, not, not every uh, teacher is, um, is, is mentioned, just uh, the ones that are um, that have made an achievement or have uh, made accomplishments and or earned badges. Um, oops, sorry. We also have them outside um, our maintenance office and our certified uh, uh, staff areas. Uh, their their main areas. So our secretaries are invested. Our staff members are are um, custodians are mess are are. are are invested into it, bus drivers, um, district office um, personnel, they're all invested are, uh, in, into, the, into this program. And the challenges, oops, the, um, the tools that we get to use, um, we're using uh, Illuminate, we use uh, True North Logic, and we're using um, our Google Suite and Google Classroom to keep track and to um, uh, utilize within our, our, our within the, the professional professional development. Um, what Madison, uh, my school, does, has done with this um, since the program is it, it's very flexible in the way that uh, the, the the sites present it to their staff. The um, there are 16 challenges that the, the teachers get, and they range from having a, a, one of the challenges, online presence, uh, technology resource management, um, working with a personal learning network, uh, different ways to assess students, uh, doing blended learning in your classrooms, uh, publishing student work. Digital challenges, uh, digital and informational literacy, working on their uh, those two different liter literacies, using Google Classroom, using Google Drive, um, having teacher-led professional development, and with teacher-led pro uh, led professional development, it's sharing of ideas and strategies, collaborating with others um, in your uh, your PL uh, personal learning uh, network. So, what a cool thing about this is that sometimes. One challenge can also be used for another challenge. Uh, being a lifelong learner, so taking on online um, webinars or face uh, face to face conferences, or talking with our district coaches, uh, our content coaches, uh, our science coach, our, our uh, English uh, language um, 
language arts coach or our uh, new teacher and uh, new teacher mentor uh, coach, and getting ideas from them and implementing them and having them come and evaluate and, and assess how well your your new learning um, uh, has taken place in the in your classroom. Um, we also have personal uh, site uh, challenges in our school uh, at uh, in Madison Camelview. We are using um, coding, inter integrating coding into the classroom as a challenge, and integrating thinking maps into our classroom. So, in order for us to get started with um, our level up, uh, which we started um, September of this month, or this year, excuse me, not this month, this year. Uh, Madison, we, we have a, a group, a core group of uh, Tech Suave uh, teachers um, that were part of our, um, our former um, uh, Madison Integrates Computer Education program um, uh, several years ago. And those uh, teachers, we um, got together with admins um, to start planning out how to introduce this professional development, um, this new model, to our, our staff. Um, kind of have a slow start, uh, or slow um, uh, intro, or a, a cold intro into it, uh, so that it's not so overwhelming to our teachers and our new teachers, um, and, and trying, to, trying not to um, overload them too quickly. So we've introduced it to them with, with the help of our, our, our tech sweat, uh, savvy teachers. I created um, one of my strengths is uh, Google Suite and Google, uh, 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 Google Classroom. So I took the time to develop a, a, a learning, uh, the, the, the uh, Google Classroom where, and the Google Form to help organize the evidence. Um, our teachers, our, our, our core group of tech savvy teachers, um, they helped lead many trainings and coaches, uh, coaching to staff members that uh, that need help with um, how to of how to submit um, uh, evidence or how to use Google uh, the Google Suite um, and other um, other uh, um, uh, support to uh, in, in to help them with some of the tra challenges or that uh, that that uh, we we are um, uh, we developed with them or uh, present to them and also um, we also have um, uh, a big celebration uh, and posting of results and accomplishments um, at our um, uh, at our school. It's one of our, our our mission statements. It's one of our our, our it's part of our vision statement um, or and our our action steps for our mission statement. And. To, to kind of bring back to uh, our gamification of, of what we of what we know, uh, our users are the classified and certified t uh, staff and teachers. Our challenges uh, there's 15, uh, 16 of them. The points you can earn one point uh, uh, one to three points on the challenges. One point is everybody kind of does it, so just take a picture of it and submit it. Um, three is the above and beyond kind of work. Like you're leading the professional, you're leading um, a, a professional development session on on the um, on the information that you've attained from from our um, from from the workshops to others other teachers. Um, there's uh, there's three different levels: bronze, silver, and gold. Our badges are taking the leap, professional revolution, and change agent, and up to uh, it's 32 points, I believe, for taking the leap. Uh, for taking the leap, uh, or between 11 and 32 points. Uh, once you get 11 points, you get the, that take a leap badge. Uh, 42 points is the professional revolution badge, which is your your walking the walk, talking the talk type of uh, activities. And then the change agent is. 74 points, and that's you're you're walking on water, and you're the you're you're close to tech godhood, <laughs> if you will. Um, 
And then we also have, um, instead of ranking our users by this person got first place, second place, third place, we have uh, our posters um, to present uh, that, that are posted on in the main thoroughway, thoroughway of our uh, hall uh, of our school that just that shows the, the, the teachers uh, accomplishing that, that challenge um, in kind of random format. Um, it's kind of a place of honor, um, kind of a hall of fame, if you will. Uh, we also use Twitter and um, uh, to also announce um, our accomplishments too. And um, next year, when we have more, uh, uh, when we introduce our um, our welcome back or at our welcome back, um, uh, uh, a welcome back breakfast uh, for next year, uh, there'll be a, a time for us to also get recognized um, in front of the whole district. All right, so here are some pictures of, of some of the things um, that uh, we've accomplished. Uh, we've, uh, you might be wondering, well, what's the incentive for teachers if, uh, to, 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 to participate? We do have a, it's very flexible with teachers for participating. We would love everyone to do it. However, we understand that it's not a, it's not a realistic thing to have everyone drop everything to do the, to do challenges. So when you do do a challenge and you do get recognized for it, you also can earn some really cool things, some really cool swag, um, like gift cards. Um, we have Chain Day. We have um, uh, treats that uh, the teachers can earn. Um, not, not the little small kid size treats, but the big adult kid size, or the big adult size uh, treats. Um, teacher supplies, uh, movie tickets, um, and these are, are determined at site level. Um, at district level, when you earn your, your badges, you, you get recognized with um, a, a, a very nice um, district shirt. It's, they're, they're really high quality shirts. Um, there's a, the professional, if you get to the professional uh, revolution, uh, level or badge. You can um, earn VR headsets for your classroom. You can earn a professional development trip. Um, there's a digital camera that's available, uh, which I'm definitely looking forward to earning. Um, and or there's also you can you can purchase an item that's up to uh, $250. Uh, and then the the um, the final badge, the incentive, uh, which is what um, I'm hoping to achieve either by the end of this year or next year, is the, um, the Chromebook cart for my class. Uh, and that's at the change agent level. Uh, and one cool thing also the, about this, is, uh, about the pro our program, is that if you get 90% of your teachers uh, invested into the challenges. Uh, uh, I think it's for each challenge, uh, for each challenge, or for, um, I believe it's for each challenge. You uh, you can earn um, um, a Keurig machine, a coffee machine for your for your school, or an ice cream bar day uh, for your um, for your staff, um, or treats for everybody. And it goes all the way up to from from that. Um, from taking um, taking the leap badge level all the way up to catered breakfast, catered lunch, catered dinner um, for um, change agent, which um, we're we we've got a long ways to go, but it's it is kind of encouraging um, uh, from some of the comments that I that I hear from our teachers um, uh, to to try to to get them all invested in. Here's our wall of honor, and it's a centralized location where the visitors can see uh, what the teachers have um, accomplished and um, uh, and the staff have accomplished. And it's this long hallway that everybody walks through, and the teachers that have accomplished the um, the task, their picture gets um, posted on on the board. And um, at this moment, at our school, we have 
five, I believe now six teachers that have a, have at least accomplished that have accomplished uh, um, a challenge. Um, some of the teachers have also accomplished two or three challenges. Um, uh, or completed uh, challenges. For example, um, my, my co-partner Stacy and I, we, we both have four challenges, um, soon to be five, I hope, uh, hopefully after, after today, uh, after this uh, webinar. We use Google Forms to keep track. Uh, it's uh, It's a. Uh, it's one of my uh, one of my child's uh, or my, my one of my children's that I've created. I helped develop this. It, it, it was a. Uh, it was a lot of uh, new learning for me uh, to to work with Google Forms and uh, Google Sheets, uh, especially with formulas. I, I I understand the how to use the sheets, but I I was having some struggles with how to. Um, Use the formulas, and with a with a couple of reach outs to some some of the experts in in the Google education community, um, and some of the forums, um, I really got help a lot of help with um, how to tighten up my forms, uh, how to tighten up the um, uh, the, rep the formulas so that they do self reporting, so that um, when I see, when I hand this over to our administrators, they're not it with a lot of technical jargon, they can just go in and, 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 and plug and play and look at things on the fly. Um, and that's another uh, a record um, of the use of uh, the form, Google Form. And um, like I said, we have uh, Google, uh, we're using Google Classroom as the, the management system. Uh, it's also the one-stop shop for information and tutorials. So this is another one of my brain uh, brainchilds that I've uh, I created, helped create. Um, there are areas for resources for teachers that I, I I add every so often. If I find that there's a challenge that no one's really accomplishing, I look at some resources that will help them try to invest a little bit more into uh, or uh, to, to make them or to, to push them into going into looking at how to do it and then any questions and comments or concerns they can also address through the Google classroom with our parking lot and I'm going to, for time purposes, I'm going to slide past uh, the, the example here. But this is just an example of the Google form and the um, suggestion box. It, it came to my attention that a lot of teachers um, weren't um, under, um, I wouldn't say wouldn't under, don't understand, but um, to help them out, I came up with a document to, to explain when you do X, Y, and Z, do this. When you encounter this problem, here's the solution, and here's an example of what you would do. For example, the, the one thing that in my in my previous uh, in my uh, previous years, um, I've uh, noticed that teachers would send out um, very generic descriptions of their files, or very non-descriptive descriptive, uh, file names on on, on their on, on certain documents. So in order to help teachers out and help the administrators out, um, I came up with this suggestion form of, well, when you send in, send in uh, evidence to the Google form, please put your name, the challenge number you're doing, the points that you're doing in the file name so that when we look at it, we know, oh, that's Teacher Smith. They're going for challenge two for two points. Awesome. So instead of having to guess what what uh, teachers are, are are trying to do, and some of the benefits of 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 our our professional development, 
Um, there are interest-based challenges. Not all the teachers have to go through every single challenge. You, you can pick and choose the one that you are comfortable in doing right away. Um, staff members, when we start having more and more teachers getting interested and invested, staff members really rely on each other. Um, they go to, if you know if they know a teacher that knows how to do Google Docs very well, they're going to go to that teacher and say, "Hey, how do you set this up? How do I how do I use this in my classroom?" So there's a really a, a really good kind of um, I would say Kagan esque kind of vibe with the um, with our teachers in regards to relying on each other. They definitely have to um, they look for those resources uh, within each other. We're using known resources. We're not pull, pulling out um, things that are the latest fad. We're using um, our, our we're losing we're using Google um, Suites because that's what we're, we've invested in. We're using Illuminate because that's what we've invested. Um, we're using our our resources that we we use um, pretty much on a database as our our source of resource. And I like to have is for future uh, consideration, we are looking at going beyond, above and beyond the, la the, 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 the per present levels of challenges here. Um, so if someone gets a change agent and they're done, what's, what's next for them to do? There is some talk about expanding it, um, going in depth into uh, the resources, the uh, 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 in depth in resources is something that we would like to uh, look into more. More time to explore um, the challenges, um, to uh, um, go a little bit further into how does blending learning look in in a, in, a, in a class in a kindergarten classroom in a third grade classroom, um, and also if there is less initiatives that we have in place. Um, to take off our plate so that we can really focus in on the uh, professional development, um, the, the professional development model. Okay, so to reward you for uh, time hopefully well spent, um, we do have a, a little giveaway. Um, we have uh, two gift cards to Amazon. Uh, they are two $10 gift cards because, well, um, Stacy and I are not very rich teachers here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we just happen to have two gift cards um, 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 lying around for, um, for, for someone to earn. So um, I'm going to turn this over back over to, um, I think, Lori, uh, to, or, or Peggy, to, to pick our winner. Oh, yes. For people that have been on our webinars before, you'll know this routine. We did this last week during our anniversary celebration. So what you do is you raise your hand. So click on that icon over there just below your name, and a number will come up beside your name. And what will happen is I'm going to run the random number generator, and I'm going to put all of the numbers in for each number that I see here. So if you want to win this prize, get your hand up right now, and in just a moment, I'm going to say, stop raising your hand, and I will select the numbers. Okay, I see that we have 10. Don't raise your hands anymore, and don't Lower your hand. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Thank you. Because if you lower your hand, it changes everyone's number. Okay, here we go. Between 1 and 10. And the winner is number 1. So, congratulations, Nabila. All right. Nabila, give us your email address in the chat so that we'll know how to send you the gift card. Um, Peggy, we also have another card to give. Want to do them both at the same time? Perfect. Everyone, lower your hands. If you don't, let me let me see if I can do that for you. 
You just click on the hand again and your hand will go down. Okay, all the hands are down. Now, if you'd like to win this card, this is card number two, raise your hand now. There you go. Anybody else? I love Amazon gift cards. <laughs> Wish I could enter. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Don't raise your hands now and don't lower your hands. I see eight hands up and our winner, I just have to get that entered, is number five. So that would be Joan. Congratulations, Joan. Share your um, email in the chat. I'll take it out of the chat before we publish it. Thank you all and thank you, Jesse and Stacy. Okay, um, so what happened in my classroom is that my students saw the poster outside my door and they're like, wait, what's that all about? And then they saw that I got to dress down and that I got candy one day. And so they, um, we, we had talked about possible ways of doing extension menus or um, something for them to do when they're done. And they asked me, they're like, well, can you do something like that with us where we get to earn things? Um, so I spent about two weeks developing the ideas and called in lots of parent volunteers and um, developed a level up for my students in the classroom. Um, I do have mainly, um, I have an accelerated class, I have a few gifted kids, but they're the high achievers, so often it's hard to keep them um, busy, they, they uh, go, go through things a little quickly. So we have operations, the students um, are asked to complete, you know, whatever that day's work is, whether it be an exit ticket or um, a cooperative learning structure with their teams or partners, and then we have to finish their missing work, and then if they get all that done, then they get to work on level up, and they're really excited when they get to do that, um, because it's, it's, oh gosh, I'm, I'm all caught up with my work, now I get to play, yay! Um, so you look, some of the pictures are a little tiny, but they get, they have notebooks in their desk. Um, it's called Win Time, What I Need Time. So this is mainly when they have the most time to complete their um, level up tasks. Um, during What I Need Time, I'm pulling small groups and they're working independently or with their teams. So just there's a chart that they can um, look at to see, okay, what do I need to accomplish first before I get to level up? And then that bottom picture are the expectations. Um, we use CUBS in our school um, for our behavior system, our PBIS behavior system. And this one is a little bit of a, a closer up of that. Sorry, it's a little fuzzy. Um, this is my level up station. Um, you'll see the poster in the middle. That's where we, um, the kids earn stickers to under each challenge. And then on the left, is the, um, we're thinking that school, so I created a true map of the math activities they can do, and then on the right are the ELA activities they can do. And there I pulled my activities from, um, like Jesse said, with using Illuminate, the students take assessments either within Illuminate or their NWEA math test, and then I pull the reports and I look at what's needed overall in my classroom. So. Um, theme was very difficult for them, so I made sure there were at least two theme activities in there. Um, fractions, that's, that's, oof, that's a rough one. Um, division, so um, what I like about this too is we did division two months ago, but now they're still doing it, so it helps them spiral back and remember what they were doing. Um, so I tried to vary the activities, so some of them are independent, some of them are packets, some of them are a game that they have to record. Um, and there are a few partner ones as well, especially as they get into the higher levels. Um, just like the professional development one, there's a level one, a level two, and a level three, and that increases the, um, um, the rigor, too. So the students can choose to go for the higher ones to get more points and then um, are really challenging themselves. 
the lower level ones might be a packet, the higher level ones will be um, creating something. Uh, maybe they're publishing uh, another, or writing and publishing a story in Google Classroom, or they're creating, um, one of them may create a Jeopardy game in um, Google Classroom. I provide them the template, and they can create a, a Jeopardy game to review um, the vocabulary that we've done or the math skills that we've done. So it, it goes from, you know, again, just a packet to them creating their own thing. They can become an expert. They can research anything they want, and they get to decide how they want to present it to the class. Um, you'll notice in a little bit it's to the left, those are task cards. And then, yes, this was a lot of setup all at once, but parent volunteers are amazing. Utilize them. Um, everything is done. So it, it took a while to get it up and running, but then now I'm done. And it looks like, although a couple of them you can see are pushing pretty hard through them, they're very motivated. Um, it'll get me at least another quarter out of them um, where they can never say, I have nothing to do. Um, this is a closer up of the poster. You can see, um, once in a while, just you know, for those writers that um, never finish their work on time, I want them to be able to get stickers too. So there are some times, um, like there was the um, number numerical expressions under math where they all had a sticker except for one. Um, they did it with a sub. Um, that was one of their activities that they that I left in my sub plans. So they could all at least get one sticker. Um, once in a while, too, I'll say if, if um, today if you get all your work done, if you have at least four reading level ups and at least four math level ups, you can enjoy it. You can read a book or get on a computer, dealer's choice. And they really like that. Um, awesome for every five points, uh, um, five stickers they get. They earn a smencil. We've been selling smencils as a fundraising tool. And I used box top money to purchase some that I could use as prizes. So it was no cost to me, but I also have a student who brings in a lot of box tops. Um, and then for every 10 books, I've used my Scholastic book points to get a variety of books, and they get to choose a book. And so they really like that. That's something that they get to keep forever. Um, so even the students that um, don't have the money to purchase this one, so when we're selling it for our fundraiser, they get to earn one by doing a level up, and that's really um, motivated them. This is a closer up of the documents that are in their folder. Um, so you'll see, I used uh, the folders with the prongs and the sheet protectors, and so they always have the expectations with them. Um, and some of them have, like they'll pull the document out and they'll put a little check next to it. Um, so they know that they did it, and they record and, and take responsibility for their own learning and pacing. And then if, it, if it's an activity that they're working on but haven't finished, they keep it in the pow in the pocket. Um, and then what I do in the grade book, just to kind of monitor, is for every activity they complete, they get one point of extra credit for that subject area. So if it's a math activity, they'll get one point. So it really doesn't fully impact their grades, but it does give them some motivation too. Like if they tell me, oh, I've got a C, what can I do? Well, I'll get your work done, and then you can work on level up to help help those grades. Um, so the benefits that I've seen, the students are getting choice and control of their learning. Um, my, you know, those gifted and high achievers, they sometimes get really annoyed when you're telling them what to do all day. Who wouldn't? Um, so this is a time that they get to choose who they're working with. They get to choose where in the classroom they want to work. They're allowed to sit on the floor. Um, I have flexible seating in my room, so they get a lot of choice during that time. Um, they always have something to work on when they're finished with their daily work, um, including like when, they, when we have a sub. Um, I'm a coach, so sometimes I go into other classrooms, and so they have that um, if, although I always over plan, but um, there's always something that those fast finishers can work on. Um, what I also liked about this is it's self-paced. Last year I did uh, extension menus with my kids, and I had to get one done each week. And those kids who are really, really strong learners, but they're very slow processors, were very frustrated all the time. So what I like about this is that they can pace themselves. You know, if they only get one or two done in a month, that's okay. Um, like I said before, the already taught skills are spiraled back, 
And then, you know, of course, it impacts their scores. But my favorite thing is that they are learning and they are engaged. So that's um, what you see there in the picture. They're doing an activity involving task cards, but they're doing it with a um, cooperative learning structure. Um, and, you know, all helping each other out. They have that teamwork mentality. Um, they coach each other very, very well. And um, just kind of some camaraderie. They cheer for each other when they earn samples and, and stuff like that. So here we go. Okay. So, so before we before we leave, before we end, um, thank you again for um, um, listening and attending. Um, if you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter, um, Aguilar, S Aguilar4444, or MCKINJ01. We also have our emails here um, down below, and you can also, I believe it's in the, um, the, on the website as well. Um, but um, we definitely want to give some credit and some thanks to uh, Mr. Do uh, Dr. Michael Winters, he's our Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction uh, for the Madison School District. He uh, definitely is a good res um, resource and also a source of information if you want to know more on how, the, um, how, a, how a district can implement um, gamif gamification or um, gamify their professional development. Um, he can be found at mwinters at madisoned.org or um, Twitter, which is MSD38CURINSTUC, uh, Curric Instruct. I, it's kind of uh, kind of long, but uh, it does it does go right directly to him. And uh, again, um, thank you and uh, for your attendance and. Yes, I did capture your questions as they went through chat. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, what about the staff members who don't get many badges? What about the staff members that don't get many badges? Well, in our school, and I can talk about our school a little bit, mm -hmm. the, the, the teachers that don't get badges, they, well, they, they are, they it's either they're, uh, uh, they're, there's so much on their plate that they just don't have the time, which is understandable mm -hmm. because we all, I, I, I'm not, I don't think there's any teacher out there that has plenty of time <laughs> in the mm -hmm. world. But um, with those teachers, I know that I really kind of hold their hand in, um, uh, if, if they're, um, uh, and guide them through, through, uh, through, any, through a challenge that, that, that might, might interest them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there are teachers that are really scared to death, uh, even, up to, uh, uh, even t in today's um, time, that are scared to death of, uh, of the technology. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand that. Uh, it, it can be very daunting and very, very overpowering. Um, I do have a very calm personality where I, I'm going to sit down with you. I will drag you kicking and screaming, but I'm going to do it a nice way mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to um, get over some fears and some hesitations and, and find some kind of common ground in the middle where you can, you can get that first badge or that, mm -hmm. first, that first point. We came, um, when we sat down with our, our team, we saw that in the challenges, if everybody took snapshots of whatever they're, they're doing, they can earn. 14 points. Mm -hmm. 14 points get you that first badge. Mm -hmm. You have to get up to 11. Um, and, it's, and it's simple things like um, creating a, a teacher website. Well, we do grade level websites. That mm -hmm. counts. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to uh, creating a, t a Twitter account. We have lots of young teachers that use Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all these different social media um, outlets that um, there's somebody out there that can hold their hand while I'm holding their hand um, through through that through that um, challenge. So it's it's finding some kind of common ground with them, and also finding finding something that they can do, and, and just kind of being you know their cheerleader, cheerleader um, sure. in the process. Mm -hmm. 
so you already explained a bit about how they submit their evidence. Um, do teachers feel like they are competing with each other to earn the badges or not? Well, um, there is some slight competition mm -hmm. feel to it. I don't think it's, uh, especially in our, in, in our case, I don't think it's, it's where I'm not going to share anything with you because I'm in competition and you don't deserve it type of, it's, I don't think it's that kind of feeling and I don't think mm -hmm. that's the intent of, of the program. It is a, the intent is definitely to be collaborative with, 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 your, with your teammates or with mm -hmm. your other teachers and also to share to learn from each other. Okay, so they can they can work in groups. Well, <laughs> and Stacy has definitely gave me some insight and some and some help too. Um, and it's it's kind of funny. We are birthday twins. We have the mm -hmm. same. We share the same birthday, um, but um, we do. Uh, yeah, we do kind of have a little competitiveness, but. A little competition is, is not that bad, as long as we're friends at the end and we, we're here to support each other and cheer each other on. And as long as that's, oh, and uh, I'm sorry, and as long as that's the, the in the foreground and up front in, in, the, in the community and in the uh, culture that you build, I think that, um, that the fear of competition kind of subsides. Mm -hmm. How much money was set aside in the budget for the TV rewards? Oh, let's see. You have a ballpark figure? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat it like any couple. I don't I don't hold mm -hmm. the purse the purse coin here. Mm -hmm. uh, but to give you a ball ballpark figure figure, um, the the gift cards are about ten dollars up to ten dollars. So. Um, I think total there may be about a couple hundred or up to a thousand. I'm, I'm not. Sh I, I I I honestly can't really give you the, the full n the numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. I don't see those see those numbers. But um, sure. But there is there is some investment from the from our admins to have those you know those incentives, and I think they 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 budgeted at least about a thousand or. Or so okay. on not only just cards but also other things too. The the bigger prizes like the polo shirts, the the Kurek machines, that that's coming from the district. So and I wouldn't know right. the, okay. those numbers. Okay. Yeah, I thought that would be a difficult question to answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so can people in your di district earn a badge or points for watching this webinar? That you're presenting, it, would that be yes. one of those tasks? Okay. Why? Yes, yes, it is. It's actually it's a level one, and it's okay. under. And I think I just mentioned it too. Um, um, of course, I threw all my papers over here, thinking that I didn't have to need them anymore. But yeah, it's <laughs> one of our levels. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's right here. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a uh, lifelong learner uh, cha challenge. Eleven point number one: attend an online webinar or face-to-face -face conference. Okay. So if I have any Madison uh, Madison teachers here, you got your point. Take a okay. <laughs> take a Great. take a take a picture of our of your screen. <laughs> okay. Um, and a couple people asked about. Um, whether or not you could share some of your templates. I know Peggy's gonna, going to ask that as well. Um, probably from the, some of the Google Forms and, and maybe the ones in the, in the classroom, just so people can see what they're like. Is that possible? Um, I, I were created in the Thinking Map program. Um, so I'm not sure I can get those. The, the online. That's a that's a great question. I don't want to say no because we're here to share great mm -hmm. ideas. Right. Um, but um, I, it, it will. I think it's a possibility to share okay. some of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Again, let let Peggy know, please. 
Uh, yes. Do, they, do teachers always work on badges as individuals? Oh no, they're in a group of that's a great question, and, I, and I'm and I'm sorry like I didn't uh, explain that. Like grade oh, school teachers. Yeah, there, there. Um, actually, there's, there's uh, times in our PLC uh, time that teachers um, work together collaboratively okay. on on certain on certain uh, challenges. And in fact, it was actually funny. I looked at the response, um, the record of completion. Uh, one day it was blank, and then the next day after a PLC, there was lots of different um, uh, evidences uh, marked in the in the challenges. It was like. Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. really uh, positive to, to see that. Great. How is the impact on learning evaluated with the teachers' tech initiatives? That will be assessed by I I'm, and, and I'm a little bit certain on this. It's through our administration. They, mm -hmm. Our administration um, do, do pretty fairly uh, regular walkthroughs and uh, informal uh, 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 informal evaluations, the formal evaluations at our school. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly, they do they do walk in. They they're very aware of the challenges, and they do kind of see if see the impact. They're not they're not seeing if the teachers are actually uh, there. The teachers are. Are doing the challenges right there and then, but they they're seeing the impact of it once mm -hmm. it's been posted. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also know that um, it's reported back to um, to our um, to the executive director of uh, curriculum and instruction to mm -hmm. Dr. Winters, uh, and he has a kind of a pulse on it on on, right. on it as well. Those were the questions I was able to capture from chat. I think, given the time, we probably should should continue with our ending. But thanks so much for presenting today. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you, Jesse and Stacy. I just love what you're doing. And I hope that people will take some time to really explore all the things we have in the Live Binder. And if I can get together with you, we'll, we'll chat about if there are some things we could put into templates that we can show them more about your specific examples. Um, we have some great shows coming up, but next week we don't have a regular show because next week is EDUCON. And even though that is a face-to-face -face conference, they do a bunch of their sessions virtually, and it's all free. So go to this link. Um, it's in the live binder. And just sign up so that you'll get the announcements of the links to join the sessions. And it goes from Friday night through Sunday. And they have some great keynote panels um, on two of the days. And I think that you'll really enjoy it. So we want to be able to go to that so we're not holding our webinar so that um, all of us have the opportunity to participate. Also, the next week on February 3rd, we're going to have another show with alternatives to tra traditional PD with Deneen Lashinsky. She is one of Peg Volek's colleagues. And on February 10th, we have the amazing Shelley Terrell joining us to do a, a whole webinar on teaching with fairy tales. It is fabulous what she has to share. And you will learn so many different ways you can use fairy tales in any curriculum area. And she gives some, of, some really good tips about how you can help students learn to write their own fairy tales. So looking forward to that. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link. There's also access to the 
the form or the link in the live binder. Each month we have, or about each month, we have a featured teacher. You can also nominate yourself as a featured teacher. The video collection is on iTunes View at this link, also accessible from the live binder. And when you exit the session, the survey should open up in your browser. You can take the direct link, you can take the link from the chat, or you can take the link in the live binder. At the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development cer certificate. It now prints out with your name, thanks to Patty Ruffing, and she also sends these out. May one reminder about the certificate, make sure you, if you ask for it, make sure you use a personal email address. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guests, Jesse and Stacy, Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>